Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people, or can you step up? Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, you could be anywhere here on this Easter Sunday. I appreciate everybody who is chiming in and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. It's been hard this off season. I will say that without a shadow of a doubt. Let me give a shout out to Chris May with the super chat. A happy Easter everyone we got to say hello to all the lovely ladies in the place we got joanne gonzalez what's up joe joe we got crystal caramel corn we've got uh roland's review what's up stacy stacy hitting them hard on her channel definitely check her out as well and i've got my usual sunday crowd here uh troy daniels is rebooting his computer i think uh maybe my virus where mine keeps going down has hit his computer but we also have edward strickland in the house and when he was in the green room i okay i it's not really green it's it's not it's not green it's what, what color room is the room edward it's got to be blue and silver man okay. oh my room yeah, well, yeah, well, no, I, you know, they always say in the green room. I was like, oh, but it's not. We don't want green. I take the green room. That would be Eagles. <laughs> oh, so oh. What, 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 uh, yeah, we got to make a cowboy. It, it, it's the the navy blue. Yeah, navy it's blue, blue and room. Silver. There you yeah. go. Yeah, the blue and oh, silver yeah. room. So, Edward, you were saying, um, and I rudely interrupted you with starting the program. What's up, uh, Chris May? Shout out to you on the super chat, Maurice. How are you doing, Jeff Lee in the house, Anthony Carter? What's going on? Um, you were saying about the all in, and I got my chips here. I got my chips here, ready to go. You were saying about okay. Jerry Jones and your concept of all in. He said to me after listening to all the talk shows, all the talk shows, all the podcasts. All the sports now. Yeah. He's saying, you remember when he said, I want some glory hole too? <laughs> you know, that, I yeah, want me some mean, glory hole. He, he, wants to, he wants to get on camera, and he wants to podcast, and he wants to be a socialite. And then he said, get your act together. All right, if you, I don't pay you big money. I'm the big boss in sports in the world. Mm -hmm. I have a big team. Yeah. You're on the big channel. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm paying you big bucks for your big name. Mm -hmm. But I ain't getting no big wins in the big games. So let me go on social media and stir up things a little bit and see if you see what I see. Mm -hmm. If you want the big money, you know I got it, then step the game up. If not, I get somebody to replace you. Ooh. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm listening to what? You saying... Parsons had one. Uh, Once he's one had tackle. one sack. Once well, he's had one sack in four playoff games. And in one sack. That's not production, man. Mm -hmm. Now you talking about his contract coming up? Ceedee Lamb had a good year, but he's not that strong number one receiver. He was kind of well. I don't want to throw just see because here's what happens. If I say CD started out slow, everybody will say, "Well, you're just trying to protect Dak. You don't criticize Dak." No, it was every, a new offense. Though, every too. everybody's you know? got to step yeah. up now. Now, and I agree with you on that one. That we did change offensive coordinators. Now, you, in the right. grand scheme of things, let's think about it this way. It, this just the light bulb just came on. Eagles changed offense and defensive coordinators last year, right? Right. What were yeah. their results like? Uh, it diminished. Nope. They replaced both of them, didn't they? Again. All right. Yep. Right? Right. Because they were terrible. We got a new offensive coordinator, basically Mike McCarthy, and Dak Prescott, one of the most efficient seasons he's had. MVP candidate. Yep. So, you know, in, in some regards, you know, we're saying he's on the hot seat and he sucks and hasn't done anything. But in comparison to other teams that got new offensive coordinator, who had a lot of talent. You can't say the Eagles did not have talent. Lord knows with the whole unstoppable tush push that you would figure, you know, Super Bowl, uh, NFC defending champions, that they should have done better than what we did. Right. But, okay. So, but in that, in that perspective, mm -hmm. like 
CD Lamb had a good year, but they, when the camera hit him, when he didn't react to that guy pushing him in the playoff. Yeah. That's the thing I'm talking about. He had a great year, but Jerry Jones said, all right, you see that camera? Mm-hmm. Now, I know you didn't do anything because you were looking out for the team, but sometimes you just got to get your hands dirty. You I'm going to find I mean, you. I'm going to find you now, but mm-hmm. that team spirit, is in, that comes with the pack. You know, it, it, see, it, it's not – it's the killer instinct, you know, yeah. where, where to me I still think that they just thought they had it made. You know, sometimes you can believe things are better than what they are. You know, the fact that we had – remember, we first we were looking, okay, the Cowboys, they're going to be the fifth seed. They're going to have to play on the road and things, and the Cowboys have problems on the road in the playoffs, right? And then yeah. lo and behold, all of a sudden – you hear the Cowboys have the number two seed. They haven't lost in 16 games. Oh, they've got a great home field advantage. I think that they actually bought into that and were like, oh, man, yeah. we're the number two seed going against the seventh seed, man. You know, we're playing at home. Yeah, these young guys can't beat yeah, us. they can't yeah. beat us, man. Exactly. Yeah. And they came in there yeah. playing just like, you know, they're just going to give us the game. And lo and right. behold, Green Bay came in there and bitch slapped them, and they were – were surprised and by the time they woke up it was too late to me they need to realize mark i mean they're they're, like you say they're like the rich kids they're the rich kids everybody wants to play them everybody wants to do their best against Mm -hmm. the people they talk about the most you know and i just i feel like they don't realize that at points um you know we are we we are everybody's super bowl Mm -hmm. yeah exactly exactly thomas Exactly. Andy wants to know. Exactly. Are they bringing me, bringing Zeke back? Um, oh. Here's here's I, I, even if they do, I, his I, longest I, I run was are. twenty yards last year. I, I right. mean, so, he's washed so up. So let, let me Not let me give you was. what the, what a, a little birdie told me. Um, now you all heard yesterday from Jeremy Fowler that um, that the the Cowboys and him have interest coming back. What I've heard is yeah. they are going to be bringing Zeke back. And it's not a rush to go ahead and get him under contract. It's going to be about a two or three million dollar deal for him. We already still have a six million dollar dead hit from his other contract, um, but they're right. going to take their time on that because they want to keep. They've got the five thousand five million in cap space right now. They get the nine and a half million come June first. Uh, when they get wow. CD Lamb under contract, they'll get some more money. So they kind of have a wink, wink, nod, nod to Zeke. That Zeke is coming. That, that we're going to sign you. You know, just enjoy yourself. You're a veteran and everything else. Uh, stay in shape. But we're going to wait to go ahead and use that money when the other money comes available. So yeah, he will be coming back. And that they're also looking to draft a running back early in the draft. And somebody between Rico, um, Deuce Vaughn, Zeke, and whomever they draft, which we know that one won't be cut. That one of them will be right. the the out dog. You know, my thing Cowboy, is Cowboy got prime ribbon a smoker. Is, I'll be right over. <laughs> I don't understand. You know, that. How do long. you how do you sign Zeke to a contract, but then cut him? Doesn't that affect your budget? Well, if you yeah, okay, it does. It does, but if you're only talking about yeah. two or three million dollars, if they sign Zeke, they, the the thing is with Zeke. Zeke wants to retire as a cowboy, and this is also right. a move that will also help to make Dak happier too. Because okay. are, yeah, he wants to play. Are, I feel he wants to play really, with Dak. I mean, again, you know, that's that's They're my boy. Friends. So yeah, you yeah, end up making him your short yardage back, and you know, and, and, and in retrospect, here's it's crazy because no matter what I say. Somebody's going to come back and say you're playing both sides of the fence or you're an idiot and things. What I try and do is I try and look at all different sides of things. And so if somebody wants to go through it, they'll say, well, you said. And it's like, listen, here's here's the positives of it. Doesn't mean it's going to work out. The right. reality is, is people will look and say, well, Tony Pollard, you know, he had a thousand yard season. Yeah, he did. But basically, he was within about 20 yards of what he did the year before when he was splitting time with Zeke. And he went from 5.2 yards a carry to 4 yards. If you don't understand the difference right there, 
and happy Easter. Uh oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I think it is happy birthday to you. Happy birthday happy to you. I think it's Angelica Barone's birthday and also Stacy Schubert. Happy yeah. birthday, belated. Happy birthday. Yesterday was Stacy Schubert's, I believe, yesterday. And Cornelius Thorne. A shout out to uh, Gina Dallas Divas. Oh, better man. half. All right. That's her. It's it's her husband as well. I mean, you it's know, her, it's I, I gotta tell you, I don't know how many of you are friends of hers on Facebook, I but am. she's got, you know, yeah, got a photo been, shoot where you know if Facebook you put day. her beside Beyonce, you have a hard time telling them apart. I've been wanting to ask you that question. Is, is she as pretty as her name is? Oh, I've met Gina, Gina Dallas Diva. Is she let's, as pretty let's as put her name? It, let's put it this way. Her husband is a lucky, lucky man. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, he's okay. a lucky. You know, actually, all of us married men are lucky. We're lucky to have right. because right. you know we wouldn't know how to drive our car and when to stop. Okay, we wouldn't know which way we were supposed to go in life and everything else. We wouldn't know, know that we're supposed to pick that shit up and wash the dishes. We are lucky. <laughs> That we have have all these wonderful women in our lives because we we would just literally be sitting at the foot of the bed saying I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the rest of my life, but um, uh, we kid because we love. But happy birthday, uh, Rose Roland's review, Stacy Schubert. I think it was yesterday, and Gina Dallas Diva's husband, then as well as uh, Joanne Gonzalez with I'm sorry, not Joanne, Stacy uh, Angelica Barone with the puppies. There we go. Okay, I think I got it right. And we got Game Time Brian. What's up, man? man What's up, Game Time? How are Brian, you? Brian, How what, everybody? Brian, what the hell are you doing, man? What the hell are you doing? Why? What's up? I can't, every, every day I look and I see, bam, you know, it's 6,000 today. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I'm over 6,000, yes. Bro, uh, am I going to have to bump you up to 50,000? <laughs> Dude, stop it. Stop it. You keep raising the bar, man. You know, <laughs> I like it, but I'm, you know, I'm doing the best I can here. Sure, but yeah. Your best is doing pretty good there, bro. Thank you, sure. man. Yeah, hey, you're good, Brian. So, Thank you. I, I appreciate it. When Mark, I, I watch his videos, he always tells me, oh, well, check this out. I'm like, dude, I already watched it. Or if I don't watch it at work, I'm from walking, I'll listen to it. So right. when he says like statements like, oh, well, Vach Lombardi in game time, I just laugh because I'm not on Vach. Yeah. You know, I'm just getting started. But I appreciate that, Mark. You no, are but, but see, very, see, very that's where, cool I, with that. I, 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 I know, appreciate I know my limitations, okay? I, I honestly... See, when I try and do something, I do it all the way. I make a lot of way. mistakes, Mark. Well, no, no, no. But see, I do it all the way or I don't do it. And see, the thing is, is, you know, when it comes to the Cowboys, that is a full-time job. I ain't going to lie. I don't know what it's like to be one for the Jets or the Commanders or the Panthers. But with the Cowboys and all the shit that's going on, it is a 24-hour-a-day job just keep it up with all the shit that goes on. Um, I can't keep up with college and all the prospects in the same way. And I don't want to do something in life half ass. Either I'm going to do it yeah. all the way, or I'm you know I'm going to fuck up at full speed. Um, so that's where I'm just not. I just don't have enough time yeah. to sit down there and break it down. Shout out yep. to lovely Linda. How are you doing today, Linda? So and that's where I need your help because you are really really good with it. Um, and 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 speaking of Vosh, I remember. Oh my God! What's when up, we did David? That road What's trip, up, Lady Libra? We did that road trip to Dallas for the draft. And Angelica. just sitting there with Vosh, and Vosh was like a machine gun. Yeah, with he's, all a, the, he's, he's a like, machine gun. And you're just like, okay. He can go just, deep. Just wind deep, him up and just, just let him go. Yeah, he'll pause <laughs> is right. Um, but you are really good. Up. You, uh, DMV, are really good with uh, the prospects and things. So yeah. I was looking today at, um, uh, oh, shit. Damn, one of the guys from NFL Network. Uh, his mock draft. Yeah, and uh, they you, had got, us, uh, you got a few of them. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and just, yeah. uh, they're all. I mean, everybody's going to be basically the same. Um, you know, some people had Bucky us. Bucky Brooks had you us. Got, you know, we should draft Michael yeah. Penix, but that's not what the Cowboys are going to do. I, I think that you're probably going to have six quarterbacks taking probably the top twenty. Am I crazy on this? Right. One? Uh, it, it. They shouldn't, but they will this year. At, at yeah. least, at least five. Uh, I have. Yeah, I'd, um, I'd say five. I'd yeah, I'm too. looking at yeah. um I'm looking at obviously in no particular order you got Jaden Daniels, Drake May, 
uh, Caleb Williams, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr., and possibly, I think four. If I had to really guess, I think it's a lot of smoke screen, but probably maybe five, mm -hmm. possibly six with Bo Nix, which yeah. is absolutely crazy because there's maybe yeah, that's two. Yeah, crazy. There's <laughs> maybe two actual first-round guys. But, again, you know how it is. Need, you know, we're, Dallas isn't the only team who drafts for need. So if anybody gets a that. chance, I just posted Dude, you, a little while ago. I did a mock draft. Mm -hmm. Everybody get, is getting caught up with a name. Oh, my God, we got to have Jackson Powers Johnson. Oh, my God, we got to have this. Just go watch it. It's only a half hour. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I just posted a little while ago, and it's, it explains how you could trade literally out of the first round. And yeah. I was You able trust to get them in the five, second? I was able to get five top 76 or 78 players. And mm. only like only in the fit in my five rounds, I was able to get my fourth round back. My first pick wasn't until 57. And I can tell you that my uh, my picks were friggin unbelievable. I mean, so just go check it out. So you know, who, did, who did you have Dallas trading out with uh, in the first round? Well, they offered me trades, and I decided which ones I liked. I ended up trading a couple times. I traded to, like, uh, 32, Arizona? and then I traded again. I traded a couple times, and then I'll, my first pick was set to be at 47. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I traded back to 56, and that's how I got 56. I got – it was, like, 60, 63, 70, 76. Those – that's where wow. the – where That's the where is. the meat of the draft is. There, right? We don't have a fourth round yeah. pick. Mm -hmm. I was able to get mm. the Georgia center. I was able to get Jonathan Brooks. I was able to get Peyton Wilson in the second round. That was mm -hmm. my first pick, Peyton Wilson in the second round, which I, you know, I was able to get two defensive tackles. It, now, exactly those names, all those names may not be there. Mm -hmm. I just want everybody to you take a breath. I wish the Cowboys would do this. Just please, just. Maybe. Okay. Do not get caught up in a name. Right. We need more than yeah, one yeah. name. And one other right. thing. Stay away from guys that have been injured in college. Well, okay. Peyton Wilson has right. been injured. Yeah. So. Thank, thank, oh, yeah. Thank yes, yes. I don't take him in you know, I told Mark. I told Mark a few weeks back. When we were talking about the draft. I told Mark. I said, Mark, a lot of these guys who are, you know, who are, who are projected to be first-line draft choices, mm -hmm. they're not going in the first round. Yeah. They were going to second and third. Yeah. That's the reason why. That's the reason why the second and third round draft choices is going to be the most important this year. That's going to be the meat of the draft this year. I'm telling you, do not. Well, all right. uh, well, there's nobody that deserves be, a fifth round, a fifth draft. year. You know? Yeah, I agree with you, Thomas. Hundred percent, man. Because mm -hmm. a lot of want, these, you know, like I said, a lot of these first round, a lot of these potential first round draft choices is not going in the first. Just like all these quarterbacks everybody's talking about. They're not going in the first round. The only they thing that can throw a curveball, round. Thomas, is if Brian Thomas, I don't believe he's, there's any chance, any way, shape, and form that he's going to be there at 24. But if mm -hmm. Brian Thomas is on the board at 24, we're, we have a problem because Dallas values him like they, if not more than how they valued um uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, when yeah. he came yeah. out of LSU. Remember how much they oh, loved yeah. him? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. that's how good this guy is. Now, again, do I want to take a receiver in the first round? No, but if we're going to be no. doing Hell things no. the right way, you know, you got to look beyond this year. You got to look at, okay, we got CD. We got a couple young guys. Mm -hmm. Brandon Cooks is done after this year. We're yeah. not resigning yeah. him. So then yeah. who do we have? Nah. So it's like... I don't want to do it, but if Brian Thomas is there, he's like one of three guys that are, if they're on their board, Mark brought up a guy, I think he's going to be long gone. But if Troy Faltano out of Washington oh. is on the board, he is a, um, pick him. He's a yeah. plug and play left tackle. Uh, and outside of that, there's obviously other guys, but they're going to be long gone. So um, yeah. there's like two or three guys. Uh, I got, I mean, I want to ask you guys this. Let's say, uh, all I mean, everybody's gone, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, let's say a uh, Brian Thomas Jr. is gone, but let's say Byron Murphy's sitting there. <laughs> Brian Byron Murphy has no business being there at twenty four. He's the defensive tackle, uh, but he, he's not a one technique. Mm -hmm. He's more like yeah. an Aaron Donald light type of guy. Better, yeah. So he's better than Kalijah Cansey was coming out last year. So 
if Byron Murphy's there, he's my third guy that I think you have to take. Would you guys be upset with that? You would, you would have to take him. I mean, and you, that's, it, he's that good. Oh my God, the haters. Yeah. But listen, um, I hear you, you Mister really, Cowboy. Could you guys really see us taking a? Uh, a he's a three. A, yeah, a no, tackle no, two times I don't. in a row. I don't. I'm just round. telling you that would be like one of three guys that mm -hmm. I would have to take a hard look at. Mm -hmm. I probably I heard, would still look at the trade down. You know, know what, though? It, At the same time, that's where we got hit the, the hardest in the free agency mm -hmm. with our defensive line. Yeah. You know I'm so we might, in the draft, have to show a little bit more Mr. attention. Mr. Cowboy, like I said, check out my mock I just did. I only did a five-round mock. I was able mm -hmm. to get two stud defensive tackles back-to-back -back in rounds three and four. You know, Ended up... So, you know, just think yeah, about that. You're smarter than the Joneses. <laughs> well, here's, here's my thing. I appreciate Mr. that. Cowboy. They're sitting on yachts and, you know, I'm <laughs> sitting there. There's still more on it, though, being honest. I know. I hear you. I hear you. Thank <laughs> here's you. Here's the one thing, though. You know, I, I know that the talking heads out there, because, see, this is the same cycle we're always on every year. Every year, the Cowboys have lost so many players. They're not replacing them, and they go through with all the guys they said that we should have re-signed. You know, think about Dalton Schultz last year. They kept telling us how stupid we were for not signing him. You know, I think they offered him $13 million. You know, would we have been in better shape had we kept Dalton Schultz? No. But when you start looking at Dante Fowler and you start looking at Dorrance Armstrong – Doris Armstrong had eight and a half sacks, which is not bad, but you know that price tag that he got. I'm not sorry, fifty that, million dollars. He's not. And then when you start thinking about Navell Gallimore and the guys that we lost in the middle, you know they weren't stopping the run. I mean, this wasn't Chris Jones that we lost. Most yeah. of those guys are guys that you can get veterans that replace. you know a, a million or two that can replace those guys. Now the question is, can we have some people that will be better than what they were? And I think, you know, Jerry Jones actually saying that, you know, when he was asked about the culture question, if you mean running the football and stopping the run, you know, if that was your, your question, then yes, we have a culture problem. And that's why I think they figured, let's clean house on those guys. You know, yeah. we're not going to re-sign Tony. Tony, was, it was a mistake that they made by not having a Thunder guy that, you know, yeah. uh, Tony Pollard's more of a lightning guy. He is not a Batman. And... <laughs> Dropping 1.2 yards a carry shows you that he wasn't. And so paying that $8 million to him, uh, I'm okay that they didn't on that standpoint. So, you know, I think if they do draft somebody in the draft and they take care of the offensive line, they'll be actually better suited. And it looks like Zeke Elliott is going to be returning, which will be your short yardage guy. And maybe if you keep him. Your third that, down pass protection type yeah, of guy. You know, yeah. you know 10, 12 you carries a game, maybe he's going to be okay. What have y'all heard about Brock see, what, Hoffman? What, what, I, you know, I would take Brock Hoffman as center. I would. Mm -hmm. You know, I would take I mean, him as center if, if, if we can't draft one. And you know Zeke what? Elliott. And Zeke it's, Elliott. It, but most it. people. Are, <laughs> go ahead, go Thomas. Ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Thomas. What, what most people are failing to realize, Zeke Elliott was doing – the small things that count, you know, some of the small things that we can't see. Mm -hmm. And that was what, that was what, that was, the things that he did were the things that showed up last year. If you think about it. And I don't want to talk, I, I, I don't want to talk about what oh went down, down in Miami oh. Christmas Eve last year. I don't want to talk about that because we already know that. Because we know that if Zeke would have had the ball at the one yard line on Christmas Eve last last year down in Miami, we would have won the game because that would have been yeah. a CD. But like I said, Zeke, if we resign him, it'll be all good because, like I say, he can do those real small things that we as Cowboy fans can't see. Like that, for an example, like that one block that keeps that keep that from getting sacked, or that one yard on third or fourth and one or third and fourth and inches. Yeah. First down. See, 
Hold those on are the second. things that those are the things that we was missing out on last year. On this motherfucking plane. Everybody I, I just head. I just have to read this, guys. Fucking windows. Martin I'm Gilman sorry. says Dak Prescott is holding this team back. If we had Baker Mayfield, Cooper <laughs> Rush, or even Gardner Minichu, oh we would go to the NFC Championship game. Oh, because God. because all those guys are going to the NFC Championship games. All those guys are having tons of success. Dude, are you on crack? Seriously. It's because they Come have on, man. somebody blocking for them. Come on, my man. Goodness. Oh, my God. You know what, though, y'all? Dak Prescott was like, it feels like to me he was like 85% of our scoring offense last year. Yeah, he was. Our, our scoring offense was so pass heavy that I don't understand why Cowboys fans that you know, our true fans can't see that. I'm talking about the ones that don't support Dak Prescott. Uh, How do they not see that without Dak having that good of a season, we don't even have five wins probably. You know, and we really thing, do you, it you're, you're 100% right. We've been through this before because look at the 2020 team. Hmm. Dak got goes hurt. out and what happened with Andy Dalton? Remember, everybody was saying, oh, there's no difference between Dak Prescott and Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton is good. And that's the same thing people used to say about Tony Romo. Then Tony Romo went out in 2015, played four games, and we were 4-12. and We won mm. one game without Tony Romo. And you know what's funny? Matt Castle, who at one time was a Pro Bowl quarterback, there was Brandon Wheaton, who, you know, Jerry Jones said, you know, he throws the prettiest ball. We had, uh, who else was, who started that season? Um, somebody else started, I think, a game or two on that one. Was it Kellen Moore? It yeah, I think Kellen. I think did. Kellen started oh. one of those games. So four and twelve. Okay. Mm-hmm. Once you understand that the next year Dak Prescott took that team that was four and twelve that had veteran quarterbacks on it that anybody Number could one do, seed right? In the and we went thirteen and three. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to hear that. Oh, well, anybody can do it. You're crazy. You're crazy. Sorry. That's bullshit. You um, know them guys that hate that, man? They play fantasy football. Fantasy, fantasy football. football. Okay. <laughs> well, that's he, what that that's is. What had pretty good fantasy numbers. Though. I was going to say, he, Dak was good in fantasy football last God, year with these, his numbers. All those touchdown passes and passing yards. I mean, oh, every, I every, love that. Coyote said, according to ESPN, Jamarcus Russell could have gotten us to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> oh yeah, right. But that's oh, basically. Hey, that's why, I, that, that's now why this, I traded Dak to you a few years ago there, Mark, mm-hmm. so you could have him. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. And he was doing it up for me. And, you know, I see Dak Delusional fan here saying that, you know, we need to draft another quarterback because you can't go wrong doing that. But I'm, I'm, for those out there that are saying draft a quarterback, what happened to the Trey Lance was the guy. That's how I thought mm. he was the guy. Because, I mean, literally, if you dra- they can't draft a quarterback. If they draft a quarterback, then they basically said, we just wasted a pick on Trey Lance. Yep, okay? pretty much. Because and Trey Lance knows. has a one-year deal. If they deal. draft a quarterback, that, that tells you Dak's not in the plans after this year. Well, that's true, that's too. What, that's, well, what that, also- that's my main point out of it. If they mm-hmm. draft a quarterback, Dak's gone. You know what though? Cooper Rush is on his last year of his deal, also, y'all. You so have no Trey problem Lance. bringing him back. You have no problem bringing Cooper Rush back. Cooper Rush is a backup. Trey Lance could well, potentially be a starter in the league. Yeah, well, he has to well, rebuild his he, stature. Here, here's well, here actually, here's how you'll know how Trey Lance is: is if they cut Cooper Rush in training camp, then they're going to say, "Okay, we've got something with Trey, and maybe Trey could be there." If they keep Cooper Rush into the season. Then that, that says we have no faith in Trey Lance. I think you got to keep Cooper Rush because Trey Lance get hurt a lot. Yeah, that's true. Then what if, if, if you, you're keeping Cooper Rush because you're worried about Trey Lance getting hurt, then you then you got you no really faith. Then, then, you, then you don't need to keep Trey Lance then. Well, we always had three quarterbacks on the roster, right? Yeah, but not one that's making five million dollars. Oh, you know what? You got you Trey Lance so is making five and a half. Cooper Rush is making what two and a half, three. We have like sixty-three million dollars tied up at quarterback for this season. That's a lot. And you know what's killing me though, Mark? What's that? Is that J- the Joneses are literally? It's like they're almost betting against Dak Prescott. 
Well, because that's what Jerry's always know, on against him. They know if Trey Lance looks bad in the preseason, that's just going better for Dak. It's like they're almost willing to take that risk. Um, you know, I mean, when it comes you know, to Dak's future being here. You know, I, I've been on, on – I try and play both sides of the fence and give you both perspective. You know, the thing is, quarterbacks are the hardest thing to get. And sometimes yeah. you do just get lucky. You know, when you think about um, the San Francisco 49ers, they had Joe Montana, and they ended up picking up uh, Steve Young from Tampa Bay, who was ass. They literally said, that dog can't hunt. And it ended up being that he got to spend a couple years in Bill Walsh's system behind Joe Montana and ended up being a Hall of Famer. So understanding that, you know, quarterbacks and the Cowboys, when you think about the quarterbacks that they've wanted in recent history, you know, the Paxton Lynch and the Connor Cooks and the Johnny Manziels, they keep lucky into quarterbacks more than actually finding them. So why not take you know, far? They, uh, they just paid too much. You know, Mark, when Cyclone tried to say what he said Friday night, mm-hmm. it kind of made me do a little thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my thing, my, my thing is, you know, I got to thinking about what he said, and you know, I was like, damn, maybe Cyclone Triton may have a point because why we can't pick up any top free agents? Why are we under the cap? Why? You know, I just kept saying, why this and why that? And, you know, all I could, all, all I could say about that is, I don't know. I don't know because if it's true, you know, just hypothetically, just, just say if it's true. Mm-hmm. Everybody will come come with this allegation, that allegation, and it's crazy. It's crazy. I, yeah. I see that as this man has the wealthiest team in professional sports around the world. Mm. Not just in Texas, around the world. Mm-hmm. He got mm-hmm. to be doing something right. Come on. Well, the funny thing, you, yeah. you know, here's the funny thing, uh, you know, I'm looking at people like, uh, um, that are saying that um, the Cowboys just don't want Dak. You know, the funny thing is, is that may be true that they don't, but the guy is so good that you can't just walk away from him. You know, I know that you people will, will, will say, oh, well, he's no good and all that, but I'm sitting here thinking, as everybody keeps saying, he can't take you here, here, and here, but then they'll go through and they'll talk about how great Justin Herbert is. It's like, do you realize that Justin Herbert lost to the Cowboys and Dak Prescott twice? Right? Head to head. Lost to the Cowboys twice and Dak Prescott. But they'll go through and say, well, you need a quarterback like that. But he's got no playoff wins. The one playoff game he was in, they were up 27 to nothing, got four takeaways, and lost. And lost in the second half. Right? You know, now we've got revisionist history where, you know, dudes up here saying, if we had just had Baker Mayfield, we would have been to the NFC Championship game. What? Come on, man. They just beat a limped up Eagles team just like we did. Come on. You know what? Mark, Mark, just imagine. Just imagine if that would have been Dak Prescott that night playing his Jacksonville. Oh, my God. They would have killed us. If if that would have been Dak Prescott, he would have been good as a. You would be going to his. You would have went to his funeral because Mm -hmm. he would have been assassinated. You hear me? Yeah. They would have assassinated the shit out of that. Um, but, you know what? But go back, people. Just go back. It was funny because um, let me see, actually. I'm, I may actually have it still on here. It is. It's almost comical because we are in the exact same place that we were before. Let me see. Do I have it? No, I don't have it on here. I thought I had a clip of it. But if you listen to Marcus Spears from three or four years ago, he's saying exactly the same thing that everybody said about Dak Prescott and his contract, okay? Everybody, you know, the Cowboys, they said before that the Cowboys should have moved up in the draft and taken Tua. 
that we should have traded a couple number ones, moved up, and taken Tua. Had we done that, CD and Micah wouldn't be here. Mm. Think about that for a second. We'd have, we'd have missed out on two on two cornerstone pieces of our team. Right. Pretty much. And then your your new quarterback it does not have you know uh, doesn't have a top receiver to throw to and you don't have that generational hopefully generational talent you know as a defensive end and that's what we were talking about and when you start thinking about where what what San Francisco gave up to move up for Trey Lance they were fortunate that they ended up falling into uh, Brock Purdy um, with the team that they have but that's few and far between and so if you're talking about San Francisco moved up I want to say from 13 to 3 or 12. No, they moved up from 12 to 3 to take Trey Lance. And it was three number ones and I think a second to do that. Are you willing to do that Damn. to try and – Yeah, no. That's what I'm saying. And that's what people don't seem to understand. When they say, you know, we need to get one of those first-round quarterbacks. Well, take a look at that draft. You had Trevor Lawrence, number one. You had uh, Zach Wilson, number two. Trey Lance, number three. Now, what if we had spent three number ones to move up and get Trey Lance and didn't have CD and Micah? We've been a real, we've been a real bad spot. And that's where people will say, you're just a fan of Dak Prescott. You're not Look a fan at the of the Jets. Cowboys. Look what oh, the Jets God. did. They keep Jack drafting Wilson. quarterbacks. Yeah, they oh. keep drafting quarterbacks. It's not an exact science. That's why we talked a little while ago, you know, about – all these teams reaching, wanting to trade up, you know, for uh, the quarterbacks. Um, it's very, very interesting to see, but it always happens. A lot of these guys who are not first round rated, not even close, are are being taken. So the Jets, don't be surprised if they take a quarterback relatively early. Why? Aaron Rodgers, what, 32? One or two more years, maybe. Yeah, and, it, you know, there you go. Uh, they're going to try yet again. It won't be a first round necessarily, but who knows? Maybe it's their, yeah, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe they will. Pound. Yeah, well, maybe they take one in I wish, that here's the thing that, that drives me crazier than anything else is that people will follow along with bullshit and think that it's reality. Because yeah. I keep seeing this thing, you know, we've been paying Dak so much money, we can't put anybody else on the roster. That's bull crap. Okay. Total bull crap. Even after the, the biggest cap hit before this year that we had, which you have to put on the Joneses, was the year that he was tagged and it was $31 million. That's the easy narrative, mm. Mark. You know that. It, That's no, people who don't it, want to the do next year, but talk. The next year, his cap hit was $17 million, guys. The year after, it was 19 Last year, it was 26 and during those years where you were paying chump change, yes, it was a $40 million a year contract, but you can manipulate the numbers in the same way. Jalen Hurts is only like $13 million this year, and he's getting paid $51 million a year. It's they kick the money down the road. At some just point, like they, you've got to buy it. Like the, but they don't like they do. Like they don't, they're not going to. They could have $50 million right now, and they still wouldn't have gone through and signed a big gift. Player in free agency. They like to say, oh, well, you know, like a lot of these, you know, whoever, ESPN, P, it doesn't matter who, uh, it, it, Daniel, uh, Daniel Lousy, it could be anybody. Uh, oh, well, CD, I, you know, it, just stop it, people. If they sign CD to a deal, you save money. And th that's the bottom line. I don't understand why people are so, oh, my God, we can't afford this. We can't. Yeah, we'll save money on CD Lamb. Okay. <laughs> it's just uh, a way to keep Dallas. Talk negatively because that because that sells just as much as uh, actually more than being positive about the Cowboys when you come out and you know, be negative. The bottom line is look at Vegas. Look at what Vegas is saying. Is Vegas one hundred percent? No, but Vegas is not in the business to lose money, and they have us with the same amount of odds to win the uh, uh, to have eleven and, or ten and a half wins. We sit with what Mark uh, the Eagles, mm -hmm. Buffalo. Detroit, there's like we're all there's like five or six of us with ten and a half wins. That's the number over under if you think Dallas is gonna win more or less. It's not like right. everybody else is so much you know further. You know, we haven't lost that many pieces, but there's a lot of work to be done. I I mean I do agree, but uh, okay. they love hitting on let, us. Let, okay, for for everybody out there blaming 
Dak Prescott is the reason why we can't sign players. 2021, this is the cap numbers, okay? This is the actual cap hits that happened for the Cowboys after Dak Prescott signed the $40 million a year deal. The highest cap hit we had on the team was Demarcus Lawrence, $25 million. The second highest was Amari Cooper at 22. Dropped down $5 million, it was Dak Prescott. So at that point, was it Dak's fault that we didn't sign anybody in free agency? No. He was the, only the third high. No. I mean, D Law was $8 million higher than he was. So how are we putting it on that that it was it's just Dak? Dak is making too much money. Okay, so we can equate that to twenty two. Let me pull that up. Um, it's not. You're being fed a whole bunch of bullshit. Yes, it's high this year because you had all those years where it was low. But the Cowboys didn't do anything in those years. They didn't do anything when it was six hundred eighty thousand dollars. And everybody's oh well, they were still paying off Tony Romo. They didn't for four years pay Tony Romo off. You understand what I'm saying, people? That's a false narrative that they're trying to give to you to try and put pressure on Dak Prescott. Oh, he's asking for too much. And somebody here, I think it was Coyote, had said, you know, the $60 million that we're talking about now is the $40 million we were talking about four years ago. That in three years from now, we'll be talking about $80 million. And we'll be saying, 60, man, why, why couldn't he sign a deal for 60? That money is going through the roof. And in case you didn't know, you've got the Eagles game in Brazil will be on, I think, Paramount TV. And they're going to be doing more playoff games that will be streamed on Amazon Prime as well as Paramount. Um, that's more money for the NFL, which will be more money in the salary cap. So I don't want to hear that. Now, let's go. Let, let me go back to one more thing on this. So, for those out there saying that, you know, Dak Prescott's the reason we're not getting anybody. 2022, Dak's number, 19.7. Zeke Elliott, 18.2. Tyron Smith was 17. D-Law was 14. And Zach Martin was 12. So, those are manageable numbers if you've actually taken care of your cap. Why weren't you getting free agents when you had your quarterback at those kind of numbers? What am I looking at, Thomas? Huh? What was that, what was that we were looking at? Was that we were looking, showing your legs up on here or something? Oh, no, that was my little niece. She's sticking with me. Oh, okay. Mm. She just right. came out the door. Um, have y'all heard anything uh, about um, Stephon Gilmore or Kirsch? Um, I think Stephon Gilmore, that they've moved on from him. I think the, the, yeah, the philosophy I, I of the Cowboys is we're getting a free agent like Boost because we're going to get Diggs back. We look at that and say that's like getting a big name free agent. It brings well, you nice back. Have an extra will be corner, better. Though. Well, it's nice, but they view that as a luxury. Okay, so you oh, look at oh. from that standpoint, and that's where they also the look at. We have on the roster that they need to find out about. Right. Well, also, I think they look and say Sam Williams is our Dorrance Armstrong, and um, Goldston is, a, is our is Dante need, Fowler. Though. When are we going to start talking about our draft pick, Um That's what we do. I, I, you know what? Starting tomorrow. I'll start working on that some more. Cause yeah, I, I, yeah, got a, I got a prospect I like to get. What's the prospect that you have that you want? Uh, Come on. Wait a minute. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Justin Rogers, Auburn defensive tackle. I have a Justin damn flashback on okay. your ass. He's a, he's a, I don't know much about that, uh, this, but uh, they say he's a, Tech one? Is that what we need, right? I got, I got well, hopefully, hopefully, Mozzie Smith, they're trying to make him back into a, a one technique. Um, what is the guy that plays against, uh, beside Mozzie Smith? Uh, Hankins is gone. Hankins is gone. What is that called? Is that tech two? That, no, next to him would be a, t- a three technique. Three tech. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thomas, you need to mute. Oh. Yeah. There you go. All right, he got it. All right, so we're back there. 
All right, so I'll check him out. Justin Roberts, D-tackle, one technique. Um, I think, that honestly, though, they're going to be looking at offensive linemen. First pick, and then right back. Second. Tackle. Yeah, well, um, they – well, interesting mock draft I saw today was with um, – oh, shit, what's his name right now? His name um, – Troy uh, Fadaru, I think uh-huh. his uh, I think, oh, shit. Um, he's a guard tackle. Basically, he's kind of like a hybrid. He's actually uh, about six foot. He's a six yeah, foot he's three, a and he's like three fifteen, three twenty, and he moves really, really well. Um, and he can play guard and tackle. So if it ends up being that you know he's not quite ready to be your left tackle, <laughs> then maybe he ends up being uh, a guard. Would you uh, move Tyler Smith out the left tackle? Yeah, uh, if I if I have to, yes. Um, right now, though, the way he's playing guard, I would rather him stay at guard. But you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, I mean, the thought was we drafted him to be Tyler Smith's replacement. Um, well, you see, he he has really locked down that guard position, though. Like, yeah, but you know, to say we got a locked down guard and we don't have a tackle now. Again, it depends on what we do in the draft. Now, with this with the guy Troy, Troy is actually he looks actually pretty good when you look at his film tech, technique and stuff. He runs about a five point oh one um, fifty. He's very light on his feet. He's actually very very quick. He's big. He's like six four uh, three seventeen, and um, definitely can move and definitely can block some people. Um, if you get somebody like that, then you, maybe you end up taking your lumps and stuff with him starting out at left tackle the way you did with um, Mozzie Smith. Um, in some regards, if you're going to go with Brock Hoffman as your center or draft another center, a guy that's inexperienced, you're probably better off if you can keep Mozzie at guard to help out either of those two guys as opposed to putting two guys that are first-time starters side by side. In the middle of the offensive line. Yeah, you're talking about having a real weak – center and left guard too, there. Yeah. That that makes it really hard. I was thinking about drafting uh Van Fram out of Georgia for center. We get him like at uh what a eighty seven pick. Mm-hmm. I I would like I would think I'd rather get him and then try to get a strong offensive line defense tackle in the first two picks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because if you don't do that, you got to trade. You got to trade down from twenty four and pick up two or three picks. Right. The thing about is that sometimes you can draft as a as a um as a you could you could draft for like a second string. You know what I'm saying? You know because we we don't know what we got with Brock Hoffman yet. Maybe he is a pretty good center, and if you could draft the center to go behind him, just in case you know injury or whatever happens. Mm-hmm. That'd be a good, you know, good fallback plan, I guess. Yeah. That's what do you think? What do you think about Jalen Ford, Texas linebacker? He's six three, two forty three. He's he definitely got the size we need for linebacker because last year Bell was yeah. Big. Jalen Ford, uh, he's definitely a fourth round guy. You know, if we can recoup that pick um yeah definitely I, and they had him in he's going to be part of this of the 30 uh the 30 visits so yes i love jalen ford you think we can pick him up with our 170 174 yeah, pick uh yeah it'd be a long shot yeah he needs to be taken probably by fourth round if you really want him he's heating up he i mean he's heating up you know his athleticism when they went and saw him the teams were pretty enamored by oh. what they saw so you know, um, but, yeah. The whole thing about our draft, our draft positioning, is that our first round pick is pretty much like a second round pick, right? You know, second round is more like a third, third is like a fourth. Mm-hmm. If you believe in a guy that's a fourth round pick, you probably need to take him like at the third round. You're not reaching too far out to get him, you know, and he could be a good pickup for us. About this, nigga. right? Yeah. I mean, that's 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 the downside to making the playoffs. And then you didn't really get really deep into the playoffs. Is that mm-hmm. you're kind of like drafting way late in the round, 
freshman year. As opposed to, you know, not making Yeah, it looking at it now, Dylan Ford or Jalen Ford's not going to be there that late. He's got to go in the 120s, 130s. So. Would, would you pick him at 87? Uh, no, I will not. Oh. So I said, you got to trade around. You got to move down and get out of the first round. Get yourself maybe move down again. We need old school uh, Jimmy Johnson slash Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do. We can recoup a lot of picks. So um, you just got to make sure that the team coming up isn't coming up for your guy. But other than that, yeah, okay. that's what you got to do, man. The, the Cowboys do not like trading out of the first round, though, for whatever reason. They haven't done it in a while. Yeah, don't, I mean, they've traded back, you know. I mean, but we, of the, course, with, yeah, and for my, yeah, for, listen, uh, their moves, yeah, their moves in free agency has shown you that this year is different. They've never done this. You could say we haven't played in free agency, but we haven't made an attempt to keep a lot of these guys. They were uh -huh. gone when they left the building, so yeah. they're gonna have to. Drop down some point multiple times to get multiple picks, and this is the perfect year to do it. Don't get caught up in that name in the first round, unless that one player you have to have. But and don't forget, we we could use capital from next year's draft to move up in this year's draft since we have so yep. many picks. I don't really want to do that because how that works is if you're going to give up a pick in next year's draft, it's valued at a round lower because mm -hmm. it's not until next year. So let's yeah. say and you don't know third, where they're gonna be. Right. If it's a fourth round if it's a fourth round that you're trying to get to this year, you gotta give up a third next year to do it. So that's just remember that. You're giving up more value than you really want to. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. If we, if we should... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'll wait. Um do you you do you guys think Oso and Diggy Zoo can fit in this uh, Zimmer system? Not he sure, could be yeah. a big a big player for us next year. He's a little bit Not small sure. for for what they like to do, but the, you know it, it, he, he was actually I small love the for player. us. He's got great hands and instinct and speed wise, but Mike Zimmer likes guys that are bigger that can kind of hold the line, and that's the difference between what Dan Quinn is uh, versus Mike Zimmer. And I think that's part of the reason why so many of the guys that ESPN people said, "Oh, we can't believe they let this player go and that player go." They're too light in the ass for what Dan Quinn's looking for. Yeah, the problem is with him. We got to find out why. It is it because, like Mark, it points out, is it because he's a little on the lighter side that he was the last two years he's worn down drastically. Later about, in the season, about third of what? Yeah, yeah, about two thirds of the way through the season, he's not getting near the pressure. He's getting worn down. Mm -hmm. So we need to find out what's going on. Can he take the more muscle and mass? Can he handle that? Because if he can, then that's something that we need to. You know, consider. You know yeah. what I mean. Definitely. So I, I got something else I was looking at. I, I know if we have uh, what two, two or three picks in the seventh round. Mm -hmm. I was looking at instead of getting running back early, I would take uh, Kendall Milton, Milton out of Georgia, and I was looking at a wide receiver named Bud Mims out of Pittsburgh. He's like the Michael Irvin. Uh, <clears throat> He's Mike Urban type guy, a Dan mm. Bryant type. He's a lot a of those guy. guys, man. You can get late, 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 late or open. free agent. Okay. Yeah, don't forget. You know, if these guys don't go drafted, you're going to pick up a whole bunch. Well, of, they always pick up a know, whole bunch on an undrafted. Free and agents. they're one of the better teams when it comes to signing uh, other free agents. Literally in the sixth round, literally. They're calling around. Mm -hmm. They have a list of uh, 30 names, okay, and they're like, hey, listen, if you don't get drafted, will you come to the Cowboys? And now you can actually pay up to a certain point actual cash. Mm -hmm. So to to a lot of these guys, it's better to not be drafted in the seventh round at that point. And then be able to be drafted. Then and yeah. pick your – and go ahead and pick – what team, look at the depth chart, your agent will say, hey, listen, you could actually make a, there's opportunity here, you know, as opposed to just being an extra guy. And the best thing you could hope for is to be practice squad. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Dallas, but just remember, Dallas very likely, if the draft goes a certain way, is going to start an unrestricted free agent 
from last year's draft in TJ mm -hmm. Bass, and he absolutely deserves it. TJ Bass is that good as a guard that, um, and he wasn't drafted. So that just goes to show you um, th th that we're very good at doing that. So uh, I'm holding out optimists. I'm very optimistic going into the draft. If they sit there and do something stupid with the first round, I'm going to be annoyed. I'll, Mark, make sure we bring enough lollipops so we can just, <laughs> I'll just start pounding lollipops. Oh, shit. We'll get the real big jawbreaker <laughs> ones, you know, the ones that you'll be sucking on. Yeah, you guys remember last year, uh, Randy freaked out and he's like, he didn't want, hey, Randy was right. Uh, he didn't want no part of Mozzie Smith, and <laughs> you know, Mark said I'm, it. I'm not going to give up on Mozzie just yet. I'm not know. giving up, no. but. Because yeah. you know what, I, that may be the uh, Rico uh, Gathers deal. Mm. Okay, and yeah. if you remember what happened with Rico Gather, I mean Rico, uh, yeah, Rico Gathers was he was really he was a little on the thinner side, but he could run <coughs> like a gazelle, and he could mm. jump and he could catch. And they're like, yeah, well, that's great, you can do that, but we want you to put on weight and be a blocker. And he put on about thirty five pounds. He could no longer run, and he was okay as a blocker. It's like, well, what are you doing? Why don't you use this guy as a red zone? Just, just have him go to the to the corner of the end zone and throw it up high and just have him jump to get it. I mean, you know, why can't we think outside the box here? You know, say, we got this guy for about 20 good plays a game that <laughs> we'll have him in here, and you fucked him up. And so here it is. You get Mozzie, who is a one-technique guy, Dan Quinn wants to make him a three technique and lose weight. But see, this is the thing that most people don't seem to understand is not all positions are interchangeable or it's just that, oh, you're a defensive lineman, you're just a fat guy, so you do everything. It's all the same. It's not the same being a one technique and a three technique. When you're a one technique, you are literally a football length away from the guy in front of you. You go like that. You are on him. When you're a three technique guy, you are out like over the guard, so shaded outside, and you're over the tackle, they're a yard, yard and a half off of you. Which means to engage you, I've got to get one, two steps upfield to even get my hands on you. That's totally different than when you can just reach out, get your hands on him, and start reading a guy. And so you're now taking a guy, you only have a maximum of sixteen padded practices now in training camp. You only have 14 maximum during the season, and you're now taking a guy from what he did before, and now he's got to learn something new and change his body. You set him up to fail. You set him up to fail. And, you know, you could look and say Terrence Steele, who ended up starting his rookie year because Lyle Collins had the hip injury. He was ass. He was terrible. And his second year, he made a major leap to where, you know, we looked and said, that's our right tackle of the future and paid him buku money. Now, hopefully he comes back from the ACL well. So we may see, now that we're putting weight back on him, he's going back to being a one technique. He's going back to what he knows. You know, if he can play as well as Hankins, that's a major lift for the defense. Or maybe I'm just crazy. Do we still have all those quarterbacks we drafted last year? Yeah. Okay, so we really don't need a quarterback because what? what's the guy? Eckerson? Eckerson? Was it Eckerson? It was real uh, high on drafting yeah. the center. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, that's the strength of our defense there is our secondary, and that's where I think, you know, because that um, Diggs is coming back, that's where we look at and say that Gilmore is, um, you know, a luxury that, you know, we don't need. You know, it's, We need him. Well, Unfortunately, but but the problem is, is you know you can't keep everybody. Okay, yeah. you know, you know, do you keep you know Stephon Gilmore and pay him, or do you look at getting another linebacker or another defensive lineman? You know, this isn't back in the '90s where they were you know too deep on almost every position and stuff. You know, you only have so many resources to go around if you're going to pay Dak and you're going to do CD and Micah and all that, and with the Cowboys being the pinning pitchers that they are, they don't want to pay a whole lot for this muffler. Uh, do you think somebody else? Go ahead. You think the Cowboys take care of CeeDee Lamb this offseason? 
I mean, that would be. Oh yeah, they're going to. Yeah, they have going to because then because here's for everybody out there that's saying the Cowboys are done with Dak. We've all been through the same stories over and over again that the Cowboys are done with Dak. This, that, and the other. I think they're making a calculated decision to say us putting the new contract with all this money from the old one is just going to be awful. We can go through, pay you the $55 million this year, right? Get that out of the way because we got the extra money. We got $9.5 million coming from Michael Gallup on the 1st of June. We'll probably get 8 or $10 million off of CD Lands when we get that contract. But the 5 and a half we have, that's $25 million, which is more than the Cowboys would probably spend, you know, in the perfect world. If they, you know, they'll sign some more veterans journeyman that will be cheap they'll sign the rookie class and still have about 10 million going into the season and they'll be good with that they'll be happy then next year you're only dealing with that 40 million that's dead and then you do the contract and that's where i think dak and them are like okay yeah it's no big deal because it's not like it's the first time dak prescott has basically been close to being done with them in fact you think what dallas having that 94 million next year they're looking at next year and going, oh, good, we got this. Now we can go yeah. after those big name free agents. Nope, they're uh, still not. But I don't think so. Yeah, well, here's another thing I thought about too, and and maybe I'm still crazy, but you think about Jerry Jones is not a young man anymore. Mm -mm. And if he is, for him to say, let's blow it all up and start all over. That uh, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that no. he's going to go tomorrow, but I just don't see him saying, let's just blow it all up. I still think that they're going to be doing some more moves later on like they did last year with the trades for Gallimore and for Brandon Cooks, um, and that they're just biding their time. They're letting other people spend the big wad of money, and then they're going to come back through, and then they're going to do their stuff then from that point. Is, is the conflict – the changing of the guard between Jerry Jones and his son, is that is that what's, what is messing up the culture of the team? I think so. That boy don't know what he's doing. No, not at all. You, you can't say that Jerry has either. So you think it's going Jerry to be worse? Jerry used Jerry's to. Not he's no, 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 no. If you go back to the beginning, that was Jimmy. That was Jimmy. Not Jeff. Jerry. The, well, the, yeah, Jerry, Jerry had an urgency the, back then. Yeah, he had, he had an urgency, but it didn't mean I that it was good. Know. He did stupid things, too. I mean, you think about Michael Galloway. I'm yeah. sorry, uh, uh, Joey Galloway? Joey Galloway. Two Joey number Galloway, ones yeah. for him. You know, and then it was like, oh, let's get T.O. in here. And, you know, uh, and, and the way they That's moved up Bill for uh, away. Shit, the glass man, where they used the first and the second. They moved up to take, uh, damn, what was his name? Cornerback. Morris Claiborne? Yeah. Claiborne, the, yes. Yeah, Morris, the glass man. Okay? They took a first and a second to move up to get him. That's when he was like the wild maverick going up and down and everything else and doing stupid shit that kept setting us back. Now, um, he went, remember, he wanted to move up to take Johnny Manziel. Yeah. Thank God we well, didn't get there's him. a reason why they were successful because Jimmy Johnson was in charge of the player personnel. And that's where, but yeah. Now the Catboy is, you see where we're at. Well, you, you can look at it and say, we lived on the talent that we had from Jimmy Johnson. Mm -hmm. And then we had those yeah. 5 and 11 years where we were just did not have any talent. That that team just got yeah. old. And, you know, Troy Aikman slowly worked his way out. Emmett got cut after he got the um, extension and so on. It wasn't until we got Bill Parcells, and Bill Parcells came and built up the talent again. He found DeMarcus Ware. They found Tony Romo. They found Jason Witten and those guys that were the the impetus. And you look at our coaching staff Wade Phillips then. and Jason Garrett. We had Sean Payton, Zimmer, all those guys. On, we had everything. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what the difference is between the front office now and the front office then is that it didn't seem like the front office was literally fighting the quarterback. It's like I think I think I really really believe that they refuse to go out there and get talent simply because they're going into a fight with Dak Prescott. Well, yeah, I've definitely felt that. Before. Think about it, because they're saying, "Oh, we can't, we can't, we can't do like the Eagles. We can't restructure contracts and get up under the cap and this and that, and so we can't go and get the talent." Oh, you know what I'm saying? I honestly they don't want like, to. Yeah, I they honestly felt like once they, they, they signed. 
once they signed Dak Prescott, you know, because Catboy was saying he's got to leave money on the table for others, this, that, and the other. No, I, I felt like they said, okay, you know, we're getting rid of Amari Cooper, so you're going to have to do it with less. You got yep. your money, but you know exactly. what? We can't afford it. We got to get rid of Amari Cooper. You're going to have your Noah it, Browns and your one leg and Michael Gallup. Listen to me on this, y'all. If Dak Prescott went to a team, which I, I hope it doesn't happen because he's my guy, you know what I'm saying? But if he went to a team that was, I'll say, I'll say middle of the pack, mm-hmm. or in any conference, either conference or either division, whatever, and he had a front office that didn't fight him, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, he would get to at least a championship game. Oh, it would be like Matthew Stafford. If he's going to a team that looks and says, you know, we're going all in. We're going to bring in Dak. We're going to put players around him, and we're going to try and do it. Um, we keep doing the whole addition by subtraction. We're going to do it with yeah. less. Keep dealing with it's the like, Muppets. Mm-hmm. What's killing me is that it's like, man, some of these teams that are getting to the big game, it's like they're ha- they're having a really good season, and then at the very end they make it a, 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 a you know they make an addition to the team. And it puts them over the top. Mm-hmm. And it's like the Cowboys, we just sit there. We just keep on sitting there just looking at us. We do nothing. Mm-hmm. We haven't and done anything in free agency. We don't agency. try ourselves. You sign one player in free agency, mm-hmm. and they're just now, not aggressive. They're not. I'll say this, but, though. You know, but, no, you know, actually, here's where it gets to be bad is they are good at getting a starting lineup. But the problem is, is when they start getting worn down or you start yeah. having inju- injuries, you don't have guys to replace them. When Van Der Esch went down, our linebacking core was done. Our linebacker. You know, mm-hmm. there there weren't other people that were back ready to start filling in. And part of that was because Overstone got hurt and stuff. But, you know, it's kind of like we always have the bare minimum. And, you know, people will say, well, you know, the Cowboys 2021, that they were, had the team that should have gone deep in the playoffs. But if you honestly look at that team in 2021, Tony Pollard was dealing with plantar fasciitis Thank you. through mm-hmm. half, half of the season. Um, mm-hmm. You had Zeke, who had the PCL. I don't remember, yeah. remember people remember that. He had Tyron Smith, who was in and out of the lineup, and by the time the playoffs got here, he was not the same guy. So you had all these guys that were kind of limping into the playoffs, and the numbers basically, you know, ended up being out that way. I think Zeke had 26 yards rushing, and Tony Pollard had 21. Bobby Beninsky, hope Jerry Jones uh, shows the draft board again. Um, hopefully, it's a, a the draft board that he shows is a better one than last year. And then get, didn't the game history. game time. Did you say that we're going to the three four? Is that what I heard you saying the um, other day? No, I said Mark was was saying. I think we're going to play a hybrid of both, be, so yeah. we're going to need Which that. I, I like the fourth. Doing. I mean, last time we went to three four, you see how bad that ended up. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. don't like, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, I like the four big guys down there. Yeah, I Both mean, the these guys can't play well under the three four. We sh- and it's shown with Mike. Mullen. We didn't have, uh, we didn't I'll have the right guys though. for him. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that you're gonna have guys like Micah Parsons who, the three four would be unbelievable for. Mm-hmm. So, just remember how Zimmer likes to play. Whether it's a three four, let's say it's a four three, he likes to play his en- his ends out a little bit wider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, he. And he likes to have his linebackers at 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 the uh, snap of the ball, at, up near the line of scrimmage in the a gaps, both linebackers, and then at the snap of the ball, who knows what's going to happen? One could drop, one could come. They both could drop. They could do a like corner blitz. Mm-hmm. Zimmer likes to disguise a lot. And what's the best way we can get pressure through the a gaps? And that's why I'm excited. So we do have a little bit of three four. I think it could really help Micah's career because as big as 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 good as Micah is, I think he wears down. Mm-hmm. He's just he, he does a little bit. He cannot go, you know, down in and down out here. If in a three four, you do a little bit more mm-hmm. with them, but it'll be a hybrid. Uh, uh, loyal, it, it won't be a true three four. We'll do a lot of four three. But in pressure situations, you may three some three four where you know they're not going to run the ball. You know, yeah. So it should be fun. <laughs> I got a question, real quick, y'all. Um, on our defense, what players do you did, did we see last year that didn't get that much playing time needs to step up the most this season? Sam Williams, family. Just this thing going. I was yeah, he just stopped getting his penalties. I was y'all was saying Sam Williams, y'all for real, man. I, I, listen, I think Sam Williams. I think he could still be a really great player for us, y'all. He has potential. He's just a hothead. 
Yeah, if we can cool if he, Zimmer can cool that hot air off a little bit, man. <laughs> I think he could be a beast, y'all. Shout out to I, I want to see what offer. Shout out that, to Big Gib. My mind, Gibson. Troy. <laughs> New channel. Yeah, I want to see how, what over Shown can bring to the team. Yeah, and I want to see. Too. Um, I want to see Diggs and um, the other guy. Shoot, the one that had a good year this year. I'm Bland. 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 Mm-hmm. Bland. Diggs and Bland. Now that they're playing good right now, I like to see them together. Mm-hmm. With the you know, hopefully we get the best version of both of them. You know, it seems like every year a Dallas Cowboy defensive player. Break out! Mm-hmm. I think. Damn, mama! I think mm-hmm. this is. I think. I think the year is gonna be for Sam Williams to break out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what Mozzie can do too. I think he's just as good as Randy Gregory, but they both lack in discipline. They're just. Yeah, they did. They get costly penalties. That cost, end up costing us a game, and mm. they need to work on that. You know and what? I want to see what. I want to see Jalen Tolop develop. Mm-hmm. I just think with Sam Williams and his penalty issues, I think he it was like he just he he wasn't getting the amount of plays he felt he should have got. So whenever he did go and get those plays, he's like, I'm gonna go a million percent because mm-hmm. I got to prove that I deserve more playing time. Maybe if we give him a little bit more playing time, he'll lessen those so mistakes. He's gonna get him again. Some supers. Last year, Dak Prescott had the best stats. They got tired and citing tropes. It's 4-3, and you don't change whole scheme for one player. Hybrid is a waste of time. Practice 4-3 and get elite at it. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I I want to see if Mozzie can kind of fill in where Hankins. Yeah, man. Is. Losing big Hanky, that sucks, yo, because he, he would have fit perfect in this system, yeah. if you ask me. But he is getting a little older, you know? Yeah, but he, he would have been worth at least a, uh, maybe like a two-year deal with like a team option on his second year. You know, I've been thinking about this real hard, and I've, I've been a little, I've been on a real upset, as all of us have, but I'm just going to be patient and see what they do in the draft, mm-hmm. see yep. if they can make some good moves in the draft, and hopefully, you know, I it'll th- give us more, be, have us more optimistic than what we are right now. I wonder if they do more big moves after the draft, because it, that, it seems like that's their MO more. They, yeah. they don't jump into free agency as much Mm-mm. but then once they have their draft see what they get and then they go out and say okay well let's take this player off the street or this free agent bring him in see how they do and it's like i said all along the joneses they want to play it safe they, they're not willing to take risk mm-hmm. and that's their downfall if they were yeah, if they would be more willing to take fail. risk you know, we'd probably be in a Super Bowl or so right now, in my opinion. But they don't want to take risks. They, every time a good player comes up, they shoot it down real fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, we don't need them. We like the guys we got. And that's all they keep going back to. Yep. Not even thinking about a Super Bowl, man. But if we could just win, win the division around, like, that would be a great feeling, you know? We did that last year. No, win the division around. We did. Didn't I we? want to get to no. least NFC we champion. No, we, get, no, yeah, we, we have not. No, we lost in the wild card. We lost Jeez. to Green Bay. They, okay, they yeah, we got we won beat the down. division though. All right, yeah, we won the division. I'm, 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 I'm going to say something. Round. I'm, I'm going to give you some stat, a stat that's going to blow your mind away. Okay, um, I want you to think about because this is what I, I, I I've gone into the whole thing of being pissed off because we don't care about the free agents and stuff and and. Some regard, I start thinking back, but this is what we do every year. Remember when Stephen Jones said, um, mm. Dorrance Armstrong is right there with production of Randy Gregory. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. And everybody laughed at him. It's like, are you kidding me? They're crazy to let go Randy Gregory. Oh, my God. They're going to, you know, that's going to be terrible. Now, we're saying that Sam Williams needs to step up, right? Yeah. Right? Or at least get a chance to step up. Now, granted, Randy Gregory was on a couple of teams last year. But here's the thing. Sam Williams, in limited time, had a sack more than Randy Gregory. Mm. Think about that for a second. So, you know, teams are still giving Randy Gregory a chance and believe that he's got talent, right? Sam Williams had more tackles solo, had more forced fumbles, and more sacks than Randy Gregory did. And that was in a limited role. So if he gets a chance, I think he can definitely get the eight and a half sacks that Dorrance Armstrong had. 
Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So in some regards, you look at this and they say, you know, do we keep uh, pay Dorrance Armstrong a boatload of money? And we've got Sam Williams that we believe is a guy who can play. We need to get him out here and playing, and we can't do that if we're paying Dorrance Armstrong fifteen million. Now, Dorrance Armstrong was pretty good, but you know, does does anybody fear Dorrance Armstrong? Absolutely no. not. No. Sighting troops. There he is. I mean, I'm just. I mean, it's like wash. I mean, well, we got Dan Quinn who knows our team well, and that scares me because he taking all these players with him, and you, I guarantee you, he's he's going to attack us because he knows our offense. Sighting troops. Kind of you're, you're right. He did have sacks in the playoffs. But when you looked at our defense versus the loaded defense that San Francisco had, it's a little easier when you have great players out there across because they can't double team you. And that defense of San Francisco had a lot more studs on it than we do. And that's the thing that will help Micah Parsons more than anything else is that interior defensive line. They're not going to get the numbers and the statistics and things, but if they can clog up the middle and require those double teams – and, and give a little push up the middle, that will make Micah Parsons that much more effective. And you need your other side to be able to step up as well. If Micah is getting double and triple team, then that guy on the other side should be feasting. And oh, man. Man, it really, oh, man, is right, man. It gets to be tiring question, being a Cowboy you, fan uh, sometimes. Would you draft at first round 24? Dallas Towner, linebacker slash edge from Alabama. He's 6'3", 247, runs a 4.4640. That would kind of like that sounds bad like bad. Sam Williams. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad pick. No, thank you. Well, That'd be a linebacker him. and edge rusher in one pick. Yeah. Well, you've already got Micah Parsons who could do yeah, that. Yeah, no. But he would compliment him if he if he you if got... he was on. Uh, yeah, he would compliment him. But why would pick him? Huh? I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Not penalties in the playoffs, unlike Sam's difference between winners and losers. Okay, so I, uh, you, you, you're right about that. But I can remember when Randy Gregory was here when we were playing against San Francisco and we ran out of time where he had tackled an offensive lineman, giving them 15 yards in a first down and a new fresh set of downs, in which case they went down a little further, and we had less time, and it ended up being that we ran out of time to win the game. So there you have it. Yeah. Uh, that penalty alone sealed his faith here in, um, sealed his faith in that. I'm saying, I've already say here in that. I'm in Nashville. No, but that uh, sealed his faith in that. Yeah. That penalty alone, that, that sealed his faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any games y'all think about going to next season? Um, I've got to go. Definitely, I got to make it back to Dallas season. now uh, this year. Oh and, no! Um, oh no! I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to a couple. Of, I'm saying I'm going to a couple of games. I, I know I'm going to a game down in Dallas, and I'm going to Dallas, and me and my cousin were thinking about going to the Atlanta game down in Atlanta. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, I want to go to the Browns Cowboys game in Cleveland. I want to go. Um, I want to go to Pittsburgh and I want to go to San Francisco for some reason. I don't know why. Them, them two, I definitely want to go to. Mm-hmm. I want to Pittsburgh. Go to you're gonna be paying a, bit, a lot of money to go there. Really, to Pittsburgh? Yeah, I tried a few years back. It's expensive. Really? Mm-hmm. Hey, is 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 game time? Brian still around? He's still there. Yeah, he's there. Yeah, I'm letting him talk. Brian, this morning you. We're talking about Rasheed Rice in the car wreck this morning. Down yeah. in yes. He is, a, he is a suspect now in a hit and run case. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's 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 a six car accident. I actually have the video to go on. It, it's kind of amazing. Um, so the, the whole details on that apparently, a Corvette and a Lamborghini, they were racing in the left lane. One of mm. them hit the uh, median and bounced over and ended up wrecking and getting into six car pile up and they ran from the cars disappeared he looking still alive, you know okay now rice um apparently has a suspended license now there's mm. now we don't know for Whoa. sure if he was driving or not but that may be why he fled the scene so right. yeah 
that that could be some serious. Now, could you imagine if that now, when when Sam Williams had his uh, fender bender, how much how much publicity that got? This yeah, one well, was there was <clears throat> injuries on this. Now, not major ones. They said they were minor injuries and stuff, but it but it's still hit and run, and you're driving a suspended license. That's, that's true, man. You in trouble, bro. Yeah, well, that's why I I kind of did a 180 and uh, went back and revisited. I'm like, you know, I gave Micah a hard time last year for being a podcaster and being in his basement and podcasting and talking about other teams during the season. Uh, but looking at looking back, I'd much rather have Micah doing a freaking podcast than out in the car doing stuff like this. Yeah, hanging at the you know, So I kind of walked it back and said, hey, listen, you got to pick your poison. Sometimes it's not as bad as we think, you know. It, not, and, and, and again, we don't know what happened with, you know, you know, Rasheed Rice, but come on, man. He had the world by, he has the world by his, you know, the by homeless. his hand, man. He's... He's a second round pick. He's he's a Super Bowl winner. SMU. Yeah. He's no, got a bright twist future. Digger, twist hey, digger. I, I didn't Williams. say it. I said if it's true that he was driving the car. So no, I yeah. can't prove it. But it was yeah. his car and it could be that somebody else was driving it. Um but it, I'm just saying yeah, if yeah. it was him and he's got a suspended license and he was racing and flood the scene, I said it could be big problems. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's all. I mean, it is what it is. All I'm saying is, what we're saying is, it sucks, you know, because he, and I can't sit here and say, oh, well, he should have had a limo. I mean, he's not making that kind of money. He's a second round pick. Okay. He's not. So he's a regular he's a guy. Super Bowl, too, though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, hold up, hold up, hold up. They were racing. Is that what it was? They were it was a Lamborghini and a Corvette, and they were racing each other, and that's when they had the accident. This wasn't. I had too much to drink, and I think I, I you know, I, I'm hopefully I can get home in one piece. Well, that's well, that's out. Uh, that's like Sam Williams. That's what he was doing. Yeah, he just didn't get into an accident. Well, he got into well, an got, accident, but by accident. himself. Yeah, yeah, he didn't take anybody else out. So I'm just, I just walked it back and said, "Hey, listen, Mike, do what you got to do, brother. Just stay out of a a, a car on." The, Whatever road stay it was, out, in stay, Dallas, out, stay out so. of the strip clubs, yeah, getting those uh, invitations them, right? late at night. The yep. difference with them is they said that a, they say right now, Earth is fight for their life. Oh, okay. Mm. See, that's that's a problem. Oh, I heard that's, that. Oh, yep. okay. That's now, if that's, that's the case, night, it could turn into manslaughter. Now, now here's where yep. you, you know this is actually look at Henry Ruggs. This is actually I mean, kind of interesting because. You know, there have been a lot of things that have happened with Kansas City Chiefs. Coaches, including... Um, um, Remember the one dude? Derek Thomas? Was, uh, well, no, not just Derek. No, I'm talking about recent no. history. Well, remember the there have been a lot of players the off-field issues a- there. Um, Andy Reid's son ended up yeah. being drunk and ended up hitting another vehicle and, and seriously injured some young girls in a car. Maybe kill somebody. Yeah, it, or some, yeah, it was bad. And that kind of got yeah. swept, and the, the the case went on for years before they was finally heard. But I never heard anything back. But then you had like um, the running back that went to the Browns. Remember where mm. he had his issues and things. But they've actually had a lot of different off the field issues that nobody seems to really talk about in the same way as if this was a Dallas Cowboy player that potentially was a hit and run. TMZ would be all over this shit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's because they're, they're a small market. Big big name team, but a small market in a way, if you think about it. Yeah, but it's, well, it's because the Cowboys moved the needle. Yeah. And the narrative is, you know, the Cowboys, it's the wild, wild west. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to get some dirt on them. Yeah. You, like, you, know, you know what's you so know crazy is that, go ahead, Thomas. You know, they say Dallas, Texas is the Hollywood of the Southwest. I know we're going to Alabama. One Alabama is L.A., isn't it? Alabama? Yeah. L.A., Alabama, lower Alabama is L.A. Oh, they're saying seriously injured in it. Okay. Who was that? No, from the accident. They said two, yeah. two seriously injured among six transported yeah, to one, Greenville protesting. Okay. 
Yeah, they said a pedestrian is fighting for their life right now. A spokesman of the Dallas Rick. Police Department says the Lamborghini hit the center median wall, causing a chain reaction uh, collision involving four other vehicles. Both the Lamborghini and the Corvette were allegedly driven, driven by a race, were speeding in the far left lane and lost control. Police said that both of the vehicles um, drove away from the scene without stopping. Four people suffered minor injuries as a result. I thought they got out of the car and they left the cars. Dallas News reports that Dallas are searching for rights in connection with the accident, um, and he had not appeared in jail per the records before 10.43 a.m. So, yeah. So now, it, maybe it was one of his boys that were driving the car or whatever, but at the moment, the police want to talk to him. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He probably, If he was driving, he got to find one of his boys to take the rap for him, but... You know what it is now though? when somebody is fighting for their life i don't know if that's the, it's gonna be hard to get one to take that yeah that, that's you, know hard. What? you know what you know what y'all you can't I know somebody said no another henry word. ruggs yeah that's just stupid well ruggs was just drunk out of his mind now these guys were just out joyriding having fun and racing and stuff you know i got my fast car you can't catch me mm. you know what though and, you know, and i you know, and and I go, I go, I go, I go to Dallas about two or three times a year, and that's all. That's all they drive down there: is them Hellcat, them Corvettes, and them uh, and them Lambo. Mm -hmm. That's all they drive down there. Kid Cowboy said his car got stolen. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. then he hopefully he made a police <laughs> report. Uh, <laughs> you know I'm gonna say this. But Marcus, no, it's not a cowboy player. Marcus Blackney said, "Why does it seem like shit's always going on in Dallas?" No, it's not a cowboy. It's not a player. cowboy player. <laughs> it's a wide receiver, uh, rookie, you know, or was a rookie uh, wide receiver for Kansas he's a, City. He's a Dallas native. Went to SMU. Who, he has a, you know, we're just saying. I brought up Mike and saying I apologize. I'm a little hard on you for having a freaking. At least you're in your mama's basement doing a, a live stream. You could be doing a lot worse things, and I'm not sitting there. I'm not laying blame, but look, just look at what happened. He's wanted by the police. You ain't wanted by the police for being all that innocent. Yeah. And I got news for you. If it's your car that wasn't reported stolen, then you will have some liability, even if you weren't driving it. Sorry, that's. I That's can it. say this many times, Brian. I can say this. As long as he's down in his mama's basement or his mama's attic doing this podcast, he's not out. I'm doing good. Ride, yep. Record. Just another he's reminder. Club, he's not the club smacking the shit out of somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, it's, all right. I got you, Marcus. Not, he's yeah. He's saying he's just saying drama always in Dallas. This in Dallas is. I don't know who said it earlier. Dallas is a hotbed, man. It's like L.A. This is like the new, it, it, everything is it's, everything's bigger in Dallas. Every it's, it's cheap. To, I mean, it's cheap to live. No, no, no. Uh, what? No, a state income tax or whatever it is. Whatever. So you know, just like I said, it's the Los Angeles of the Southwest. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you said it. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You know, they they actually blamed uh, the Dallas Cowboys for JFK's death. <laughs> really? Yeah. And the Cowboys were they were only around two years. How are they gonna blame them? No, because this, it happened in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Okay, but well, the Cowboys the were Cowboys originated in 1960. <laughs> the Cowboys were actually up in Cleveland, you know, to play the next day. And they they blame the Cowboys for JFK. Mm. Mm. Got to open that investigation now. There you go. All right. Well, it is six thirty. We've gone into wow. overtime here. I have time flies. Time, it always has fun. fun. Yeah, it's it, when it's drama about somebody else. It always flies. Okay. <laughs> it seems like yeah. Cowboys yeah. drama yeah. just goes yeah, on. For we're like, all right, sorry, we're out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hopefully. Um, <laughs> Hopefully they get that together. Last week, remember y'all? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Mark Mark had left, and then we were still in there talking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can, I can, leave, I can leave it. Yeah, my internet went out or something or other on that. But I'm going to end. Well, everybody, let, let get your final words and stuff on here. But I want to play something on the end here, which is so funny. Uh, this is uh, when you listen and think about where we were a few years ago and that we're in the exact same place. It's kind of crazy. But go ahead, everybody. Final thoughts. <clears throat> What time are we doing the uh, draft picks tomorrow? Tomorrow? Draft picks? Yeah. You mean my Did draft? You say tomorrow? I said I'll start working on, on figuring out who who we should get. Good luck. Okay. Now I'll be doing my live <laughs> hey, stream at 9 o'clock. You, you do know I have a, a day job in an old-ass house I got to fix, and I'm also married, hey, too. Hey, congratulations <laughs> on the house. I saw that. That's nice, man. You uh, big house. It, it, it's getting here. I got to actually go. Hey, how's it? It's a long way, Mark. The one I'm working on right now is about an hour and a half away, but tomorrow we've got to take my mother-in-law to uh, the doctor. Hopefully she gets some more good news on this leg and she can get the soft cast off and start uh, doing rehab on it. So it'll be getting her in the car and out of the car at the doctor's office, which, you know, you got to be careful with the older older people. I see, I see the house has everything except for underground barbecue pit. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to build over here. I'm going to build actually an outdoor kitchen that sometime this spring. And I'm going to oh. use the bricks to build myself like a real big brick outdoor smoker. Oh, the brick oven. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be able to put you know, maybe a half hog up in there if we want to to try and smoke that sucker. <laughs> you see that um, some Indian tribe is suing the Washington commanders to actually change the name back. Yeah. Okay. Hey, back. I thought they sued them for having a uh, risk. No. Now, now that now it's like that they wanted. They I've wanted been saying that on Facebook a lot. I don't know how much I believe it. No, it's yeah. it's real. Okay. Like it's it's on the local news here. Good luck hmm. with that lawsuit because yeah, they are a privately owned company that, that ain't ever gonna happen. Can call you know what? No? Whatever they want to. We yes, them boys. Right, Marcus. Why yeah. that would be great for the commanders, for the ownership. To Jersey. I think they should just. Just change their names to the Washington Cow Commanders. Why not? No. Oh, man. Okay. Left hand up. All right. So we're going to end in with this here. This was, oh, this is so funny. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, here's the thing. We're talking about this negotiation. It really isn't a negotiation. This is a stick up by Dak Prescott because he has so much leverage. It's no gun, no mask. Put the money in the bag. At this point, why would no. Dak settle for a deal that's below God. market when he's only one season away from true free agency in the market being able to command over $40 million a year? It doesn't make sense for Dak Prescott to settle for yeah. a team friendly deal. Yeah. If Jerry Jones yeah, wanted something like that, it. he would have done it a couple of seasons ago. Just last week, the San Diego Padres paid Fernando Tatis Jr. four years before they had to and gave him $340 million. Do you know why? Because it gave them the flexibility to be able to spread that hit of their payroll over 14 years. If the Cowboys were so concerned,